Are you struggling with addiction, suicidal thoughts, or depression? Do you lack motivation, vision, and purpose? Do you feel like you're just inching your way through life, but don't really know why you're here and don't really enjoy the life you have? This video might be able to help. It may not be the cure, but it can definitely shine some light on what you're going through, why you're going through it, and how to overcome it. So if you watch my other videos, you know that I've started doing the Daniels Fast at the beginning of each year, and this was my third time doing it. Only this year, I also did the dopamine detox along with it, which if you don't know what that is, I'll explain. But let me give you a clear layout of this video so you know what to expect. In this video, we're going to go over not only what a dopamine detox and Daniel's fast are, but also why you should consider doing them at least once in your life. Then we'll look at why I did the fast in my personal experience and struggles during the detoxing process. Then I'll share with you some of the things God shared with me in the midst of it all. And I pray that by the end of this video, you'll have some clarity, you'll have some purpose, and you'll have some hope because I know a lot of you are struggling out there. So what is the dopamine detox? Let's start by asking, what is dopamine? Dopamine is a chemical released in the brain that is associated with pleasure, attention, motivation, and the reward system of the body. You can release dopamine when you eat high calorie foods, go shopping, scroll through social media, etc. Darker sources of dopamine can come from drugs, pornography, and alcohol. It's basically something that keeps you coming back again and again for more. Even the anticipation you experience before achieving that thing you desire releases dopamine. So a dopamine detox is removing all or at least some of the dopamine triggers in your life for any given period of time. Things like social media, sugary foods, video games, entertainment, and music. But dopamine is not a bad thing because as I said, it helps you maintain attention and gives you the motivation to do something. You'll actually never get rid of it because you need it to survive. So if it's not all bad, then why would you want to detox yourself from it? Well, because it's related to pleasure, if you have too much dopamine release while doing something, then that thing can easily become an addiction and it can be very difficult to break. So if you find yourself constantly eating sweets, constantly picking up your phone, and constantly unable to have the motivation to do anything productive, then I would highly suggest you do this detox so you can at least see the results of it and address what you may need to cut out of your daily life. What is the Daniel's Fast? The Daniel's Fast is based out of the book of Daniel and can be either a 10 day fast or a 21 day fast. In previous years, I did it for 40 days, but this year I just did the 21 day fast. Just like the book of Daniel says, depending on your translation, Daniel ate only vegetables and water during this period. In modern times, people typically eat other things with it like fruits, beans, and juices. But the main point of this fast is to get closer to God. You are depriving the flesh of any distractions or obstacles so that the Holy Spirit can move in your life without hindrance. And in the process, supernatural things can take place and miracles can happen, as they have many times when I've done it. Why did I do the detox and fast in 2023? First of all, I did the fast because I can't think of a better way to start off a year than to dedicate it to God. Also, whenever I do this fast, I always get some revelation or clarity that I didn't have before. So the Daniel's fast is something that I'm just going to keep doing every year because in the process of making sacrifices to honor God, I'm also being empowered and uplifted to go further and do more for his kingdom. The detox on the other hand, I've never done before, but I'll tell you why I think God led me to do this. In modern times, we live in an age where social media and entertainment dominate our lives. We quite literally bow our heads to our phones while tech companies line their pockets at our expense. Media corporations know how dopamine works and they know how to use it to their advantage. 
Facebook, Apple, Amazon, TikTok especially. These companies have dopamine triggers rooted within their algorithms and their business models to keep you coming back for more. Behind all the pretty colors and fancy graphics, they are businesses and their main goal is to make money. And the longer they keep you hooked, the more money they make. This is one of the reasons why people have no motivation to do anything besides watch TikTok and scroll through their phone because they're basically being digitally drugged. The overstimulation of dopamine in everything we consume is putting us in a position where it's 10 times harder to do productive activities because they simply don't offer the same level of dopamine that these digital companies do. The more I realized this, the more I realized I don't want to be a slave to this system. And I don't want to be a slave to my desires like the scriptures warn about. I don't want to be addicted to anything other than Jesus, and I want his desires to be my desires. So on New Year's Eve, I started the 21 day fasting and detoxing journey. I wasn't as strict as I normally am with the fasting part this year, so I mainly just ate fruits, vegetables, nuts, and even some rice. With the detox, I cut out social media, television, video games, secular music, and entertainment. The only social media I gave some lenience to was YouTube for business and school purposes. And let me say, I almost did not do this because I have so much social media and so many projects that require digital presence. I felt like I couldn't afford to sacrifice any of that for 21 days straight because I would miss out on potential opportunities. The Lord quickly corrected me and reminded me that no, I can't afford to miss out on God. Without stopping to hear clear strategy from the king, all those projects are in vain. Don't let your hustle mess up God's timing. And don't let your impatience allow you to miss out on God's opportunities. The best thing we can do if we want to see victory is to sacrifice it to God. You have to stop to till the soil before you plant the seed or you won't see the harvest. And another thing, don't go into this fast without faith. Meaning, don't go into it not really expecting anything to come out of it. Some of you are in such a hopeless place because you've been disappointed so many times that now your faith has essentially become numb. You had high hopes that something would change, and it didn't. And now you don't really know or remember what it feels like to have faith or to believe in something because you saw it fall through so many times. But let me tell you, please come out of your grave and don't let the past hold you back from the freedom and the blessings of God's kingdom today. Don't let your faith now be dictated by past disappointments and past experiences. You're still breathing, aren't you? Then you still have destiny, you still have purpose, and you still have hope. Of course the devil wants to destroy your faith because it's your faith that moves mountains. But you can't go into this fast without high expectations, without anticipation for a miracle or a breakthrough because you get what you believe for. So if you're not really believing for anything, then that's what you'll get. Soften your heart and let your unwavering childlike faith be restored so you can remember what it feels like to believe in something again. Another thing I haven't made clear in previous videos is that fasting without prayer is basically just a diet. So while doing this, you don't want to be so focused on what you're eating that you forget to pray or read the Bible. And if you're someone that doesn't really know what to pray, here's what you can do. Every day, choose one person and one nation to pray for because the nations desperately need your prayers and the people around you desperately need your prayers. Just think of the people you know, or even the people you know of, pick one of them and pray for them throughout the day. Then look at a map of the world if you have to, and pick a nation to pray for. And if you struggle to read the Bible, just read one chapter a day, or even a couple verses. Just make sure you stay in the Word and continue to pray while doing this fast. So the first couple days of this journey was pretty difficult. There was definitely a detoxing process that took place. I had a migraine for three days straight. I was extremely lethargic, had no energy, no motivation to do anything really. It was a struggle just to pray for longer than five minutes. And I was honestly kind of depressed. 
so I was definitely having some withdrawals and this really just confirmed how much dopamine I was getting from media and how my body was in a way depending on it for motivation. But this detox was actually really good because it helped me distinguish what areas in my life are an addiction and what areas are just a lack of discipline. Eventually after the first couple days I started feeling much better and was able to work, study, and pray again. And by the end of the journey I had a lot more clarity in my life and a lot more vision for the new year. So I asked God to not let this just be a generic encouraging video but that his words would speak through this directly to you and what you're going through. So here's what he gave me for you. There's a lot of reasons why you're struggling with the things you're struggling with. One thing you need to ask yourself is are you trying to fill a spiritual void with material things, with digital things? If so, then you are trying to satisfy something eternal with something temporary and you will be disappointed and you will be left hungry. In this dopamine rush age, the flesh is overstimulated with pleasure while the soul and spirit are dying. So we really need to get desperate for God like our lives depend on it, because our lives do depend on it. You may find yourself repeating the same bad habits over and over and you're wondering why you can't just flip a switch and turn off the depression, turn off the addiction, turn off the thoughts of suicide. Well, ask yourself these questions. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Your actions are shaped by your thoughts, and your thoughts are shaped by what you consume. So if you find yourself drowning in darkness, cut off the pipeline of darkness in your life. Cut off the triggers that are making you sin and keeping you in bondage. I dare you to take a couple weeks and don't listen to any music, don't watch any news, don't watch any entertainment, stay off social media, and see what happens. Some of you are in such a cloud of heaviness that you honestly don't want to be here. You're wondering what really is the point of living, and you're debating if it's even really worth it anymore. So if you are battling with suicide, I pray that you grab a hold of the vision of God for your life. Because when you have a vision, then you have a purpose. And so when death knocks on your door, you can look at it in the face and say, sorry death, I have work to do. The king gave me a mission and the reward is so worth living for. Another reason put on my heart why you may be struggling is because you are just in a bad environment. This isn't meant to be blame your problems on your surroundings or a victim message. It's not meant to be run away from your problems, the grass is greener somewhere else message. But if you need some clarity, you may just need to change your position in order to change your perspective. Some of you are just surrounded by darkness where you are and you are literally suffocating. Maybe at your school, at your work, maybe even your own home has a bad atmosphere or the people you're living with are not seeking God. Whatever the situation, you may just need to get away for a while, to step out of the fog, to get some clarity and direction from God. Personally, my family was going through a hard time many years ago. One day we were at a gas station and randomly out of the blue, this little girl in the truck beside us hands us a ticket to go out of town and looks at us and says, you just need to go somewhere. We had no idea who this little girl was and she had no idea who we were, but I took it as a sign from God at just the right time. Some of you really just need to go somewhere. You need to get out of where you are because you are being overwhelmed with bad influences and it's just breeding chaos and confusion in your life. I saved the most important thing for last. One of, if not the main reasons why you're struggling is because you are lacking something. You are lacking, get ready for the word, love. You may have just dismissed me and said, no, that's not my problem. I'm good on love. I have plenty of love. But I'm not talking about love at a human capacity. I'm talking about the love of God. And let me explain why this is so vital to understand. Test yourself on this. Take a minute to imagine the worst person you can think of. Do you love them? Would you die for them? If not, then you've fallen short of the love of God. 
Jesus loves that person and Jesus died for them just like he died for you. Why is this relevant to your struggles? Because love is often considered to be one of the fruits of the Spirit, which it is. But one thing we should recognize is that if the Holy Spirit is God and God is love, then love is not just a fruit. It is the very tree that produces all other fruits of the Spirit. Without the true love of God, you lack joy for depression. You lack peace for anxiety. You lack self-control for addiction. God really revealed to me that even the struggles I deal with personally stem from selfishness and a lack of true love. And in a world where we're constantly overexposed to wickedness, the love of many has grown cold. So this year, I pray that the love of God would overtake you in a way that it never has before. That was the number one command from Jesus, was to love God and love your neighbor, because true love really does fulfill all things. I pray that God gives you strategy, clarity, vision, peace, joy, strength, life, freedom, deliverance, breakthrough, and above everything else, an overabundance of the love of God in 2023 and beyond. I pray this video helps you, and I pray you have a blessed and fantastic year. If this did help you, share it with a friend who may need to hear this message. Make sure to come back again for next year's fasting video. I'll see you then. Have a blessed life.